We're moving on to lesson number three on our course on the digital economy. My name is Michael Santos. For those of you who are coming to us right now for the first time, I am the founder of Prison Professors. And through this course, we are striving to help more people in prison prepare themselves for success upon release. This is a follow-up course to our introductory project called Preparing for Success After Prison. It's available in every federal prison. You should check it out at your library if you don't have it there. Have your family visit our website at prisonprofessors.com so we could do our best to send it to you. But if you have the ability to watch this lesson, you are going to start learning about how the world is changing and ways that you could use your time today to start preparing to build your own income stream or at least make yourself a better candidate for employment when you come home. I'm an entrepreneur. I always strive to create my own income streams. It's what I had to do when I, after coming out of prison after 26 years, and it's what I strive to teach other people how to do. So um, I really hope that you enjoy this program, but I also you, become, you choose to become a part of our advocacy efforts where we are working to uh, create more mechanisms for people to work toward earning freedom. Um, but let me go ahead and start reading from Lesson 3 right now. I think before I do that, I definitely need to thank um, Ryan Salem, who is my collaborator on this project. And I also need to thank our sponsors at whitecollaradvice.com and Writing Wrongs Law Firm. Those two entities work to help us um, develop more courses that will help people in prison prepare for success upon release. If you want more information, you can find all of those links at prisonprofessors.com. Okay, here we go with lesson number three on Satoshi Nakamoto. So anyone going into prison today should think about the many ways that the world will change in the years ahead. Every day, we're seeing advancements with technology. We can read about artificial intelligence, large language models, decentralized finance, machine learning, blockchain, smart contracts, cryptocurrencies, and other advancements. In these first lessons of our course on the digital economy, we'll focus on Bitcoin, the first widely known and used cryptocurrency. So let's talk about first the origins. Satoshi Nakamoto, a computer programmer, published a white paper titled Bitcoin, a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. No one has ever verified Satoshi's real identity outside of the internet, so we don't know whether it is the real name of a person, a group, or a fake name. The nine-page white paper memorialized his thesis on decentralized networks in only 2,736 words. Since it describes the blockchain system, which is the backbone of the cryptocurrency market and which we'll cover in a later lesson, Satoshi's white paper is not so easy to comprehend. To understand the white paper, I have had to read it several times. When I asked Ryan to help me understand it, he told me that he skipped over the parts on cryptography. For the purposes of this course, I am going to do my best to summarize the white paper in a story format. So in 2009, people from all walks of life began to feel the weight of economic uncertainty. The nation was reeling from the effects of a deep recession. Banks, once pillars of financial stability, issued risky loans that went bad. Rather than allowing the banks to fail, the government stepped in and began bailing out the banks. It did not issue meaningful bailouts to people who were losing their jobs and their houses. The recession and those bailouts led to distrust of the government. Many people perceived a rigged system that favored the wealthy elite at the expense of the average citizen. Inflation began to climb, eroding the value of hard-earned savings. As a simple example, if a person had $100 in the bank and inflation rose to 8% per year, the person's savings would become less valuable. If a pair of shoes cost $100 at the start of the year, that same pair of shoes would cost $108 at the end of the year because of inflation. That's when Satoshi, who was not a politician or a tycoon, just an ordinary citizen with a revolutionary idea, came onto the scene. Satoshi saw how the actions of the few in power had put the many at risk. He conceived a system that would return power to the hands of the people, a system that was fair, transparent, and beyond the reach of government manipulations 
and arbitrary decisions. That was the Bitcoin idea, and Satoshi shared his vision by publishing his white paper. Basically, he invited readers to imagine a different kind of currency from anything controlled by governments or banks. Instead, the currency would be based on mathematics or cryptography, and it would belong to the people, verified by a decentralized network rather than a centralized government or federal reserve. So here was the solution. Satoshi proposed a digital currency called Bitcoin. Unlike traditional money, it wouldn't be printed or controlled by any central authority. Instead, transactions would be recorded on a public ledger, visible to all, but owned by no one. This ledger is what's called the blockchain, and it would ensure that every transaction was fair and transparent. It helped to build trust. To prevent fraud and ensure that every transaction was legitimate, Satoshi produced a system called Proof of Work, also uh, initialized as POW. This Proof of Work concept, or consensus, required individuals, or miners, to use their computers to solve very complex puzzles. The first to solve the puzzle would validate the transaction and, in return, they would get a reward of newly minted bitcoins. This process incentivized people to maintain and secure the network. And that's why it's a decentralized system. Satoshi emphasized that Bitcoin would always be decentralized. No single entity could control it. This meant no more bank bailouts or government bailouts, no more printing money, and no more decisions that favored the wealthy elite class over the people. Bitcoin would democratize money, ensuring that everyone had an equal say in its future. And so that's a new beginning. As the word of Bitcoin spread, people from all backgrounds began to see its potential. Some were skeptical, but others saw Bitcoin as a beacon of hope, a way to reclaim control from the centralized powers that had failed them. So let's reflect on this. Satoshi's vision was not just about creating a new type of money. It was a critique of the existing financial system, a call to action for those who felt disenfranchised and disillusioned. Bitcoin offered a way forward, a path to a system that used math and cryptography to build trust. No one would have to rely on government promises. Instead, a transparent blockchain would provide verification of value. So in the next lesson, I'm going to offer more details on the origins of Bitcoin and the blockchain, but this simple story should remove some of the mystery of how it got started. And now, as I will do in every lesson, I'm going to talk about my own personal investments. So in the previous lesson, I'll continue to show how I am using my growing knowledge of cryptocurrency to make it a part of my long-term investment strategy. After making my first purchase, I dollar cost averaged my way into the next purchase. So at 9.43 in the morning on January the 31st, 2024, I made a second purchase of 0 0.2223623 Bitcoin. I had to pay the market price, which had risen to $43,983.25. Per coin plus fees. So again, Coinbase charged me a $220.05 fee to make this purchase. So in other words, within two hours, I paid Coinbase $220.05 in fees for the first purchase and $220.05 for the second purchase. After the purchase, I owned a total of 0.4453517 Bitcoins, bringing my average cost to $44,908.42 per Bitcoin, fees included. So you need to, this is one of the reasons that you need to be studying math and English and reading so that you can understand these opportunities and assess whether they make sense. On that day, my total investment in Bitcoin was $20,000. My total holdings at that time were 
535175 bitcoins. And the total value was only $19,507.34. So I had lost $492.66 on my balance sheet from that investment. And now in lessons to follow, I'll continue offering insight into the cryptocurrency purchases that I started making back on January the 31st, 2024. And I'm going to also discuss the reasons why. But when I'm doing this, it's super important for you to understand that I'm not a financial advisor and I'm certainly not telling you what to do with money, okay? I, the last person you wanna take financial advice from is a guy who served 26 years in prison. I invested in myself and that's what I'm asking you to do. I'm asking you to invest in yourself. Learn these concepts. Had I known more about Bitcoin at the start of my journey, okay, I mean, it, it, my financial situation would have changed drastically. But when you're in prison, you don't have access to this information. That's the reason that I created this digital economy course, because it's cost me tens of millions of dollars in lost opportunities because I was blocked by the government from learning. I, don't have ac I didn't have access to the internet while I was in prison. I didn't have access to email. I didn't know any of that stuff while I was in prison, as I've described in my earlier books. And the world is changing today faster than at any time in history. And it's going to continue to change. In the next five years, the world will look very differently from the way that it looks today. I should say very different than the, the way that it looks today. It's super important for you to be thinking about what seeds can you sow today to position yourself for more success in the months, years, and decades ahead. And remember, I'll never lie to you and I will never ask you to do something that I didn't do. This is the strategy that led to me getting through prison, but also to building my own businesses and um, working as an advocate since I came home from prison in 2013, or finished my obligation to the Bureau of Prisons in 2013. So here are the critical thinking questions for this lesson. And if you're willing, we're asking for you to sh to 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 Participate openly and transparently. We want you to share your thoughts on why it might be important for people in prison to learn about technology. That's one. Two, in what way do you anticipate that new technologies will influence your life? And three, in what ways could an understanding of cryptocurrency or blockchain influence your prospect for earning an income upon release? Now, everything you'll see that I'm writing about in this course I am also doing. I'm very public about it. You can see I'm sitting here showing you my investments. I'm showing you my investments. I mean, they could fall down and they could crash and I could lose money, but that would never diminish my responsibility to always learn. You've always got to be investing in yourself before you invest in any type of asset. And I, the more that you memorialize and document that, the stronger you're going to be. That's the reason that our nonprofit launched Prison Professor's Talent. So we could profile people like you, people who are not just trying to focus on controlling the television set or some other useless activity in prison, but instead are preparing themselves in ways to emerge successfully with their dignity intact. That's the goal. And if you want to participate in this advocacy initiative, I really encourage you to send us an email to interns at prisonprofessorstalent.com and in the subject line, write digital economy course. If you don't have access to email, you can, you, we, we prefer you not because it costs us more, but go ahead and send us a, a letter to prison professors, care of digital economy course at 32565 Golden Lantern Suite B-1026 in Dana Point, California at 92629. Now, I want you to know, more than a million people go through our courses at Prison Professors. So don't expect me to write back to everybody who's sending letters. I can't do that. One of the things you have to learn how to do is say no. And so my advocacy is about bringing information inside prisons and helping more people recognize their responsibility in preparing. That's what I did. There's a lot of people out here who will complain about the government and do all types of things and laws, and God bless them. That's what they should do. That's not my mission. 
My mission is to show you how to succeed upon release. And when I say succeed upon release, I'm not talking about getting a $14 an hour job. I'm talking about crushing it. If you want to make money in the world and avoid crime and avoid the criminal justice system, then now is the time to learn. Otherwise, you'll come back and I guarantee you there will be a homeless camp waiting for you. And I don't say that to scare you. <laughs> All over the United States, outside of prisons, there are no free lunches anymore and free dinners and breakfasts. And they don't give you your clothes and they don't even give you a place to sleep. And it's very sad for me because I know that many of those homeless camps came from people in prison who focused on the wrong thing. Instead of learning and developing their skills, they tried to run the TV room or tried to forget about the world outside. That's the pathway to intergenerational cycles of failure. And it's not what I stand for. So I believe in you. And that's why I'm asking you, stick with prison professors programs because we are very much self-directed and not waiting for the government to change people's lives. Change your own life. Be the CEO of your life. Now, I can't end any lesson without thanking our sponsors at Writing Wrongs Law Firm, who makes this program possible, and we appreciate them. We also appreciate whitecollaradvice.com, who sponsors our program, and we believe in you. So I hope that you will work through these programs, build your own profile, memorialize your pathway to success. Uh, in the last lesson, I discussed our digital economy tokens and bitcoins. This court lesson, of course, I discussed Satoshi Nakamoto. And in the next lesson, I'm going to tell you why I'm really going big in Bitcoin. And it's because of the Bitcoin halving, which is going to take place in April. I believe in you. Make sure that you believe in yourself. Don't complain. Be cool.